welcome F11 members to part two of this video on tripods. Last month in hot legs we looked at the actual tripods. This month we're going to look at the tripod heads and as usual I'm joined by my sidekick, fellow professional and F11 regular John Gooding and we're going to be looking at all sorts of tripod heads and deciding which is the best and for what. There are three types of tripod heads. Basically a ball head, a pan and tilt or three-way head and a geared head. They all have their different pros and cons and then on top of that there's various specialist heads like the panoramic head. We'll talk about that later. So John, I know you use a ball head for most of your work. What would you say are the major advantages of that particular head? They're simple. They're robust and they're simple. Uh, they're very durable. There's very little to wear and induce play into the head itself. And they're very stable by their nature when they're done up tightly. I guess in many ways it is the most obvious tripod design. It's compact and engineering wise very stable. So how does it actually work John? Well there's two controls on this one. The side control here enables it to pivot that way and this large knob on the rear adjusts the ball in every direction. Um, that is both an advantage and a disadvantage. It's easy to get hold of and do up very tightly. The disadvantage is, is that you can't adjust it finely in any one plane on its own. Now for architectural work that can be, well all sorts of work, that can be a real nuisance. And I have to say I prefer a geared head over a ball and socket head but these are very durable and that's why I use it. I have to say I hate ball heads. I think they're the work of the devil quite frankly. My most common thing that I need to do when I'm setting up a shot is just make a tiny tiny adjustment to level the horizon or reframe the composition and I find with a ball head that I just want to straighten it I loosen that off and the whole thing goes out of cock. For me they don't work but tripod heads are all about how you get used to them. It's a very very subjective thing and some people swear by ball heads. So the most common type of tripod head is the three-way head uh, and it allows individual adjustments in all three ways. I can basically choose to, to level a horizon like that, I can move the camera up and down like that, or I can rotate it like that. And really it's a type of tripod design, tripod head design that takes some beating. So this is a new pan and tilt head that I haven't seen before and I quite like several, um, several design features on it. Often these extending um, controls can seem a little unwieldy, particularly when you're trying to pack, but this one has the ability to fold the controls in, make them rather more compact than it would otherwise be. Can you just show us that again, John? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because there's when you're flying or just moving around, these uh, controls can, those arms can get in the way, can't they? They can. And another thing that I quite like about this that I haven't seen before is this friction adjustment knob here in two planes so that you can adjust the tension, um, which seems to be a simple and good idea. I don't know why more people don't do that. The proof of the pudding, of course, with all these things is how they work in the field. Um, time will tell. The great advantage of pan and tilt heads is if you're planning on doing any shots of movement where you want to pan with the movement, you can use the tripod to give you a really stable base for that panning movement and then just adjust the tension on the panning wheel here. 
and it's a great tool for that the best head for that particular use also if you're doing a panorama where you want to you know do multiple overlapping images as you rotate the camera around this is a relatively easy tripod head to do it I think in many respects it's a very versatile head and I would quite happily set off on a trip to the far side of the world with this head on my tripod. It's relatively compact uh, and it seems to tick all the buttons. There's just one thing though with pan and tilt heads that still uh, I have problems with and it's this business again of just leveling the horizon. I find so often I just want to make the tiniest, tiniest adjustment. And with this, it's still quite difficult. Not quite difficult, but you can't be really, really precise. And if that precision is important, as it is to me, you can't beat a geared head. So this is a geared head. What are the particular pros and cons of this particular setup, John? Well, as you have mentioned before, you can make very fine adjustments in each plane. And for critical composition, and all our compositions are critical, whether it's a landscape or an architectural uh, shoot you're doing, they allow very fine adjustment in any one direction without messing up every other direction. The disadvantages with them well, they tend to be bulky, they tend to be quite heavy, and they're less good than a pan and tilt head for panning. I have to say that they are my preferred type of head um, because of the fine control they allow you. There's all sorts of um, wonderfully engineered geared heads on the market. Some of them are eye-wateringly expensive. It's just the durability of some of them that I have trouble with. Um, if you use them once a week, they're probably fine, some of these lightweight geared heads. This is a heavyweight geared head, but um, I have had two or three that have uh, developed some play in them that you're then unable to adjust out. But they're lovely things. So this is a Manfrotto 405 Pro geared head, and it is my preferred head for my landscape work. Uh, various things make it useful. The precision of the adjustments, as we were just saying. Here, basically, you have a collar which enables you to make large adjustments and then twisting the inner column, you can make very fine, precise adjustments in all three planes. You can see I've set up here with a tilt and shift lens on. And when I'm using these lenses, I need to be very meticulous and precise with the way I work. Uh, I need to have the camera absolutely perpendicular and level that way and use the tilt and the shift lenses to get the angle of view up and down and the depth of field I require. To do that, a really good tripod he head is absolutely crucial. We've mentioned the precision of the adjustments using this geared head. Another aspect that makes it so useful, actually, is these spirit levels here. You can see there's one there. There's another one for when I'm working vertically here. And there's one here on the actual head. All really useful for precision working, doing panoramas, that sort of thing. What's really important as well with tripod heads is that you can use the camera easily and quickly and switch from horizontal to vertical format. And with this head in particular, for example, all I do is go over like that. It's quick, it works well. There is a slight disadvantage though to that because now the whole weight of the camera has shifted away from the center of the tripod. In an ideal world, you want to keep the weight of the camera and lens over the center of the tripod. Now, when we're using a long lens that has a collar on it, we can just undo the collar and rotate the whole camera through 90 degrees, not forgetting to tighten it up again. 
just keeps the whole center of weight, center of gravity, right over the center of the tripod, makes the whole setup so much more stable, particularly with a weighty, bulky lens like this 70 to 200 mil. When choosing a head that you're going to use on your tripod, you want to consider the type of camera body you have and the lens that you have, and whether it's actually physically going to fit. With this camera body here, the clearance between the bottom of the camera and the release catch is quite tight. Um, on some cameras, it would be too tight and it wouldn't work at all probably. So you need to check that, make sure that it's going to work for you. Particularly if you're using a battery grip on the bottom of a camera. With this particular camera in John's hands at the moment, the Canon 1DX, it has a bulky battery grip built into the camera design. It is an issue and with some tripod heads it can cause restricted mo movements. Another really important thing to consider is how the quick release system works. You need to be able to put your camera on and off the tripod quickly. Here I've got a quick release plate on the bottom of the camera. It's really important that this system works well. I can put the camera on very quickly, I can take it off very quickly. And when it's on the camera, it needs to be absolutely clipped tight with no play in that system. With the plate I have on this head, um, it's quite a big plate. One of the things I like about it is this adjustment here that I can tighten it up with my fingers. Uh, it's pretty tight. You need to make sure it's really rigid on the camera and then there's no play between the two. Of course, it's not ideal when you're hand, shoot, hand holding. It's too big, it doesn't make the grip fit your hand, so I always take it off for handheld shots. So the thing is, when you're hand holding, you want to be able to use the camera and not have its uh, controls and comfort in your hands compromised. This quick release plate for my Manfrotto geared head is very stable. The bigger the plate, the more stable it is. Trouble is, it feels horrible when I'm shooting handheld. So if I know I'm gonna be doing so, I'd take it off. By contrast, this smaller head from the three-way head that we showed you earlier is much more compact. And actually, I could quite happily handheld shoot without this getting in the way. So now let's look at a specialist head, one that is made specifically for those, such as I, who love panoramic photography. This is a Manfrotto panoramic head, and it is designed specifically for the purpose of making seamless panoramas. When we make images to be overlapped and stitched together to make panoramas, you can get parallax when the camera rotates around on the tripod. What this head is designed to do is to enable the tripod to, sorry, the camera to rotate around the nodal point of the lens. And that enables parallax-free images to be made, enabling perfect stitched panoramas. What this head does is enable you to make tests to decide to, uh, to discover your nodal point for each lens and then set that here for both movements there and there. Once those tests have been done, of course, that's that. Uh, and also I can use these controls down here to enable me to rotate fixed degrees between each different shot. It is actually a beautifully engineered tripod head. And when you're all set, it's a joy to use. But it has some major disadvantages. The trouble is, it's just too bulky and awkwardly shaped and heavy, really, for normal photography. If I want to do a panorama, great but it's a really difficult tripod head to transport because of its awkward shape. 
And if I want to do normal photography using any kind of upward or sideways movement, it's just not the, the head to have. Really, it's a specialist head for a specialist purpose. But when I'm going out into the field, I can't afford to be carrying two tripods, clearly. That's uh, just not feasible. Uh, and I don't want to be changing tripod heads in the field. So I found, really, this is not a very practical tripod head for me. And, quite frankly, I very, very rarely need it. I find I can get away with using a normal tripod head for my panoramas with virtually no drawbacks at all. This new 200-400 from Canon with a 1.4 converter built in is obviously a weighty lens. It's not something that you're going to operate handheld very easily and working it on a tripod is probably not going to give you the flexibility that you might want. Now I mean I, I was using this lens in the Yukon and uh, finding that you know for shooting uh, grizzly bears and the like the absolute bees knees and to do that you need to work quickly and flexibly and you can't use it on a tripod but it's just too heavy a lens to be working with for long handheld. So I use one of these. It's a monopod and it's I wish I'd had it on Copacabana Beach actually. Quite a useful uh, implement for other purposes. So with a long lens like this a monopod can be useful but is that the only time you'd use a monopod David? No not necessarily you can use it with any lens uh, and it will give you several extra stops of capability in terms of shooting handheld while still keeping a sharp picture. Very useful. Beloved sports photographers, yeah, the like sports, wildlife, wildlife, definitely. I must confess I've never used one, but then I've never had a lens longer than 200 millimeters. Well, just have a go with this, see how you feel about it. Well, we've said it before, we'll say it again. Tripods are one of the most fundamentally important pieces of equipment that you own. Let's just uh, get our heads around what's important finally. John, what do you reckon? Well, I always err on the side of simplicity um, with all things like this. You don't want something complicated that's going to let you down when you need it most. And I favour this twist type joint on my tripods because there's very little to go wrong. You can take it apart, you can fix it, you can re-grease it and you can clean it out. And you don't pinch your fingers in a nasty clip. Yeah, I know what you mean. I used to come back from shoots with absolutely bleeding hands on a cold morning from tripod leg clips. Also, I've been on the far side of the world in Australia or wherever and ended up with tripod problems with where a leg falls off or whatever is just hassle you do not need. Reliability, rugged reliability is absolutely crucial in a tripod. I think more than any other piece of equipment, build quality and durability is absolutely fundamentally important. So on that note, off we go across the world. Okay. <laughs>